Hey, what's up? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be starting on a very exciting reading vlog that's going to be dedicated to reading thriller and horror books from Korea. And so I've kind of had this idea for a while where I wanted to dedicate a reading vlog about, you know, reading specifically thrillers and horrors that come from a different country that have been translated into English. And I decided that I wanted to start with Korea because, you know, not gonna lie, it kind of all started when, you know, Parasite came out in 2019. I got so obsessed with Parasite. It literally launched itself into one of my top favorite movies of all time. And after loving Parasite, I feel like I really started to want to get into more Korean things. So then I watched Train to Busan, which Train to Busan is incredible. Of course, we had Squid Game that just came out, you know, the end of last year. It ended up being my number one favorite TV show of 2021. And then most recently this year, I've gotten into All of Us Are Dead, which which I know you've probably heard me talk about this show non-stop in the month of February because I'm obsessed, but it's this zombie Korean TV show that's on Netflix and I'm just absolutely obsessed. And so I feel like anything that I watch that is Korean is just superior. Their writing is just always so good. It's just so God tier. And so I thought, you know, what am I doing? Like maybe I should be looking into Korean books because if they're doing something right in movies and TV shows, there's a good chance they're doing something right with books too. So I just decided to do you know, an entire reading vlog dedicated to specifically reading thriller and horror books that are by Korean authors and that have been translated. I also thought this would be perfect timing because I do know that there's a readathon called Koreadathon that's happening in the month of March and it's hosted by uh, Monica and Chloe. So I'll link that information down below. It's happening in the month of March. So it just feels kind of like the perfect time to be doing this reading vlog. I also thought it would be fun to, you know, include some fun things throughout this vlog. Like I'm also going to be watching watching some other Korean shows that I've been interested in during this vlog. I'm going to be listening to BTS for the first time, kind of, because I've only listened to a couple of different songs by BTS. I've never really gotten into them. My favorite songs from them have always been Fake Love and Life Goes On, but those are really the only ones I've really listened to except for like their really popular ones, but I'm going to be listening to their most recent album in this video. I'm also going to be making a Korean dish at home with Rachel and Obed, which you'll see in this vlog, and while doing that, I'll also reading a bunch of different books. So what are the books? Let me tell you. So the first two books that I'm going to be reading for this video come from the same author. Um, the first one is The Good Son and then this one is Seven Years of Darkness. I've heard really good things about both of them and especially about The Good Son. This one is like a pretty big bestseller from what I've heard. But yeah, both of these are thrillers. They sound very interesting. The Good Son is basically about this 25 year old boy who wakes up to the strange smell of blood and then he soon discovers his mother's murder murdered body lying in a pool of blood at the bottom of the stairs. So, and you know, this one, it sounds like it just starts with a banger. And then Seven Years of Darkness, it's from the same author, but this one, it says when a young girl is found dead in a damned reservoir in a remote South Korean village, three men, each with something to hide about the night she was killed, race to uncover what happened to her without revealing their own closely guarded secrets. Next book is going to be The Plotters, which, you know, this is the one that I'm most nervous about if I'm being honest about reading because this one sounds like it's going to be something I wouldn't typically enjoy because it's basically like about assassins and how like there's an anonymous mastermind a plotter working in the shadows and we just basically follow this main character who's a seasoned assassin and he's been orphaned since birth and you know I don't know this kind of sounds like it would be Something that I wouldn't enjoy, like I don't usually read thrillers that are about like assassins and like plotting to kill people and stuff like that. It sounds very like, kind of like he's a spy or something. Like that's not usually something that I read, but I'm gonna give this book a shot, you know, because you never know. And then the last horror book that I'm going to be reading for this vlog is Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung. And this is the one that I am personally most excited about because I mean, first of all, just look at this cover, stunning. This was the only one that my library didn't have a copy of. Of, so I actually ended up buying this one myself and I'm kind of obsessed like I'm glad I ended up buying it because it's such a cute size It says curse bunny is a genre defying collection of short stories by Korean author Bora Chung Blurring the lines between magical realism horror and science fiction Chung uses elements of the fantastic and surreal to address the very real horrors and cruelties of patriarchy and capitalism in modern society like this sounds like something I would immediately want to pick up regardless of whether or not I was doing this video. It just sounds 
sound so cool. So I'm most excited for this one. And then I also decided because I was just looking through my library audiobooks and what was available. And I saw that the audiobook for Made in Korea was available. And from what I think, this is like a pretty recent new young adult contemporary novel that follows these two young Korean American students when they're in high school. And it's kind of about how they have rival businesses. And so it's kind of like a, not like hate to love, but it's like there's there's tension because they're competitors with each other and it just sounds like it might be cute. So I just decided to include that in this video even though I know it's technically not a thriller or horror book, but I thought it could be, you know, a light thing to include in the middle of reading all of these thriller and horror books. And so yeah, those are the five books that I'm going to be reading for this video and I'm really excited to, you know, just have a vlog dedicated to Korean culture and things and, you know, reading some books that are hopefully gonna knock my socks off and I think it'll be a fun time. So let's get to it. Hey, what's up? I'm here with my first update because last night I started The Good Son and I got 77 pages into it, which is actually right at part two. And something that I didn't realize about this book when I started it is that it, there's like literally no chapters. It's just broken up into three separate parts, which to be fair, you know, I usually don't like really long chapters. I usually like more when books are broken up into, you know, chapters in like smaller chunks. But also I don't really mind it with this one because there's only three chunks. Sorry if you can hear that bird, it's so loud, what the heck? <laughs> it's not that long of a book, you know? We're only, this book is only right around 300 pages. And I don't know, I feel like I'll be able to get through this pretty quick, but I just started, just read the first part last night. And this book is really interesting so far. We're just following this guy who's like 25 years old and he wakes up in his apartment and he's like completely covered in blood and just like caked in blood. And then when he goes down the stairs, he sees his mom's body, like brutally murdered, like throat cut blood everywhere he doesn't remember anything that happened and it's kind of scary because his character like he's been known to have seizures and because of that he has like memory issues you know around the time that he has seizures he doesn't remember always what happens like right before or right after and so he has no memory of the night before and like what could have happened to her he doesn't know if he could be responsible he doesn't know if somebody like came in and did this while he was there and it's just this huge mystery of like what's going on and so far i don't know i'm really invested i'm really intrigued by it. Yeah, I have a couple of things that I need to film and get done today, but I am planning on reading at least one more part today, or if not, just like finishing it today, because I feel like this will be one that I can just read very quick because it's very suspenseful. It's very engaging. I'm immediately drawn into the story and I want to know what the fuck happened and what's going on. Ugh. What? Hi. Hello. It's like eight o'clock at night now. And I haven't read anything more of The Good Son, but I've just had like just a really long busy day today. I feel like, you know, I watch those videos sometimes that are like day in the life of a full-time YouTuber and it's like all of these things. And I feel like today would have been a really great day to do some kind of vlog like that because I was just doing stuff all day. I was just so busy. I had to film two videos. I just finished editing the video that I needed to get done today. I also got my new Blue Yeti mic. So me and my sister were planning on doing a movie podcast. So we actually recorded our little trailer today. I got it all figured out. I got our freaking podcast put on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and like all of the things this afternoon. I also was responding to emails like a crazy person all day and just like signing contracts, doing different emails, negotiations, doing all kinds of shit today. It was just so busy. And now it's about 8.45 at night and I'm finally just, I'm going to bed early because I'm freaking tired, okay? It's just been a long day. I brought um, this cute little, uh, you know, ice cream cookie sandwich into bed with me because that's just the vibe right now. And I think I'm just gonna plan to lay in bed, listen to this audiobook, and try to finish this book tonight because, you know, it's not too long of a book. And I just really want to just like relax, you know, just relax and chill out. <laughs> I just wanna be with you right now. 
Hello, good morning. It's the next morning and apparently it just snowed last night. I, I noticed that it was like snowing right before I went to bed, but I didn't think it was like actually gonna snow, but it snowed for a good like three or four hours, I guess, and I woke up and it's whiteness outside. So that was a little bit unexpected. Also, I like changed my shirt in the middle of the night because I was getting kind of hot in the sweater that I was wearing and I just blindly reached into my closet and grabbed out a shirt and I didn't even realize that I grabbed my Squid Game shirt. <laughs> last night, I did finish The Good Son. I ended up just finishing this entire thing last night because I was really invested and what was going on. And I feel like I see a lot of reviewers on Goodreads, they describe this book as, you know, to go into it not expecting a who done it, but a why done it. And I do think that I would agree with that because, you know, we do kind of get revealed things about halfway through this book about who done it pretty much. Um, but I still, I just thought this book was so fascinating. I really liked being inside the mind of this protagonist. I just found him to be really interesting. And as the story goes on, we start to learn more about his complicated relationship with his mother and why they might have like some tension there because you know he had always been really good at certain sports you know like swimming was one of his biggest passions but you know with his seizures having been so bad like he was never able to really compete anymore and it really like held him back from doing things and he's always struggled with you know wanting to take the medication for his seizures or not like there was always some issues there because he felt so much better when he was off the medication when he was competing in certain things and stuff so there was always this like tension because he didn't want to be on the medication and he wanted to compete in these sports but then his mom would be like no you can't and then i also really liked the unique relationship and bond that he had with his brother in this book i don't know i just found it so fascinating and like yeah even though this the writing style at times it bothered me because the chapters were so long it was literally just divided into four chapters chapters for this entire book so the chapters would go on for a very long time but to be honest they read pretty quickly like I found myself able to get through them pretty quickly because I was so invested in what I was like listening to that I didn't seem to mind the length of the chapters at least not in the way that I usually do and maybe that's because I had the help of the audiobook to like get me through some of the slower parts of those long chapters but for the most part like I didn't really find any aspects of this book to be slow like I was pretty invested the entire time. <laughs> I feel like too, in some ways, this book kind of reminds me of You by Caroline Kepnes, at least with the way that it's written because we're very much inside the head of this character that's kind of like unreliable and we don't know if we can trust him as a protagonist. And he has kind of a lot of run on thoughts that's kind of similar to like a Joe Goldberg style of, you know, like a run on thoughts, at least in my opinion. So yeah, I don't know. I think I'm gonna end up giving this four stars. Like it's not a new like all time favorite for me, but I really enjoyed this one and I can definitely see the hype. I can see why this is, you know, a popular author and like a best selling book. And yeah, I'm excited to read the next one. I'm glad that I ended up choosing two books that are by this author because if I enjoyed this one, then I have high hopes that I can enjoy the other one too. I might listen to one of the ones that I have on audio when I'm on the way to my parents' house because it's a little bit of a drive. How's it going? It's now about two o'clock in the afternoon and I've just kind of been, you know, having a productive morning, just getting a lot of things done. And while I've been, you know, driving around in my car, I have gotten a decent chunk of the way into this audiobook. Um, I started with The Plotters as the next book that I'm reading for this. And um, I just checked in the audiobook and I'm about just a little over a hundred pages in now. And I'm not gonna lie, you know, this was the thriller that I was the most nervous to read for this video, just because this is a little bit out of my comfort zone or at least like out of what I usually pick up when it comes to thrillers so I wasn't really sure how I was gonna feel about this and so far within those first 100 pages I'm mostly feeling a little bit confused like I'm not sure if this is one of those books where I feel too stupid 
for this book are like too stupid to know what's going on because it's not often that I read books that are kind of about like assassins but I am just still going to continue listening to the audiobook I actually just pulled up at one of my favorite parks it's like a really cute park that I don't live too far from so I really like coming here you know in the afternoons just to get some reading done when I want some like kind of quiet alone time to myself like getting out of the apartment and doing something and now it's actually kind of sunny like it was snowing you know last night but now the sun is out it's definitely warming up a little bit and I think I'm just gonna listen to this audiobook and walk around but also um, before I left the apartment I went and grabbed this strawberry lemonade I got this at the grocery store the other day and I haven't tried it yet because I've been wanting to try it for a while I don't know I love most strawberry lemonades but I've never tried this brand so I thought I would try it with you okay I just set you on the dash I know it's not the best angle and the lighting's really weird so apologies in advance for that oh we got a pop all right I love how this lid says may cause island vibes like how cute is that but anyways let's give it a try oh my god that is like even more sweet than I could have imagined it to be but like in a good way you know I love sweet drinks like this oh I'm gonna drink some more of this and just walk around and listen to this audiobook and enjoy the day <laughs> now it's like 10 o'clock at night but i wanted to let you know that um this afternoon i was able to read up to 60 percent of the way through this book and i'm so sorry but i think i'm gonna have to dnf this one <laughs> i feel like this is a situation where like it's not the book it's me because this is just something that is very outside of my comfort zone when it comes to thrillers. You know, this is not something that I would typically read. And I feel like if I do finish this book and give it a low rating, it's just not going to be fair to this book. Because I am not the target audience for something like this anyways. I feel like I'm spending a lot of this book feeling very confused about what's even going on. It's hard for me to follow for some reason. And I'm just not invested. I don't really know why I was going to attempt to pick this one up. I thought maybe like I'll just give it a chance but no it's not gonna happen I apologize I feel like I gave it an honest try you know like 60% of a book is a lot of a book to read before giving up on it but I'm sorry I can't I thought it might be fun to try to listen to some of BTS and their music you know it just feels right since I'm doing this whole vlog that's dedicated to you know reading Korean horrors and thriller books I thought, you know, maybe I should give a listen to, you know, Korea's most popular boy band. And if you are wondering, I have listened to BTS in the past, but I'm only familiar with like their more popular songs. And I think my favorite has always been Life Goes On. And then I also really like the song Fake Love. But to be honest, I'm really not too familiar with their discography, like all of their music. I was actually looking on Spotify and I can't believe that they've been putting out music since 2013. Like, what the heck? Almost 10 years? I wasn't aware of the fact that they had such a huge backlist of music available, but I think for the sake of this video, I'm probably just gonna listen to their most recent album, which at this point in time, it's the album, it's just called B, and it came out in 2020, it looks like, and this is the album that Life Goes On is on this album. It's the first song, and that one has always been my fave. I actually still listen to the song, like, a lot to this day. I listen to it all the time. So I'm curious to see if there are any other songs on this album that will slap quite as hard as life goes on but I just thought it would be kind of a fun thing you know for me to include me listening to BTS kind of for the first time reacting to it giving my thoughts so yeah that's what the beats are here for okay this is what it's all about all right I'm gonna skip life goes on because I already know that one so we're gonna start with fly to my room that would be cool if it actually you know connected to my beats <laughs> this one's cute 
I feel like something that's really unique about their music that I've noticed is how they're able to go back and forth between Korean lyrics and then English lyrics and how it's all in one song with both languages. I feel like that's so cool. Next up, Blue and Gray. This is a sad one, I can feel it. Isn't that so cool? It literally just goes back and forth. Oh my gosh. I wasn't expecting this. I love how they have the one guy who does like a rap verse almost sounding like on it. That was so good. I like that. So Blue and Gray was fantastic. I love that it's kind of like a song that feels and kind of sounds like it has sad lyrics, but it also has got some flow. I was not expecting that like verse. <laughs> that was really good. Next up is Skit. There's some talking at the beginning of this one. Is this one just talking? I'm so confused. What is happening? <laughs> it's bleeping them out. Okay, so Skit is just talking, I guess. And we're on to this one. I already like the vibe of this. It sounds like The Weeknd. <laughs> just the just the instrumental. Ooh. I like this one. All right, I really like Telepathy. That was a good one. This one is Disease. This is not what I was expecting. I love the wrapping on it. Wow, okay. Um so disease might be my favorite <laughs> so far. I love the rap and the flow of that song. I also love how they all have very like unique, distinct voices. I don't actually know how many guys are in BTS, but I can I can hear so many different voices and it's just really cool. Next up is Stay. Stay. Love the guitar. This is like that club song. So stay, I like it. <laughs> I liked it better at the start though. Like I'm not the biggest fan of those like giant like build up and then like trap music sounding songs like this, but I can see, I can see why this one would be a fun one. Dynamite. Oh, I know Dynamite. This is one of their popular ones. <laughs> Light it up like dynamite. Hey, well cool. I do know Dynamite. So I mean, that's a wrap. This album only has eight songs. That's so cool. Um, besides Life Goes On, I really, really enjoyed Blue and Gray, Telepathy, and Disease. I think those would have to be my top three faves, but I don't think any of those actually topped Life Goes On. Life Goes On is just superior. Like that song gives me chills all over my body and I freaking love it. But I was kind of surprised. Like I didn't realize that they had so much like I don't know if rap is like the right word for this, but like that kind of like spoken fast word, like flow to their music. It sounds almost more like kind of like an R&B vibe. I just assumed they were more of like a pop band. Like I would compare them in my head to like One Direction or like some of the other bigger boy bands, but I do really like the sound of a lot of their music. Like it has a lot of beat and a lot of flow to it and it's just fun. Like, I don't know, I really enjoyed that. So I'm gonna have to check out some of their other music. If you have any um, song recommendations from this band that you really think that I would like, then I would love to know them. <laughs> Anyways, I think tonight I am planning on starting Cursed Bunny for my next book that I read for this video. Um, this one, as far as I understand, it's like a short story collection. So there's only like this amount I think of short stories in this entire collection, but I think for tonight, I'm just gonna read the first short story in this one tonight because then I think I'm going to watch my, uh, this Korean show that I've been watching. I actually asked on my likewise, um, I asked for any like different Korean TV show or movie kind of recommendations because I put all the ones that I'm currently obsessed with and I asked some people if they had any recommendations for other stuff that I should watch and I got 56 suggestions so like holy cow i have so much that i want to watch now that i'm overwhelmed <laughs> but one of the ones that was highly recommended is this korean show that's on netflix and it's called our beloved summer and it's like 16 episodes each one of the episodes is like an hour long and it's like a really cute like romantic comedy kind of show and so i started it the other night and i'm two episodes in now so i think i'm gonna watch a little bit more of that tonight before bed but i've been really enjoying that one but some of the other ones that are at like the top of my watch list that I would really like to get to include Kingdom, which is another zombie show, I think. 
that's on Netflix. That's another Korean show. And then there's this other one called Sweet Home that I got recommended a ton. And then of course The Silent Sea, which is another one that I've been wanting to watch on Netflix. Crash Landing on You. That was actually one that I watched the first episode of this one like last year, I think. And then I just never continued with it. So I do want to watch that one again. And then there's also this cute one called Hello My 20s that looks super adorable and I want to watch that. There's just like literally so many Korean TV shows all of a sudden that I'm like, I need to watch this now. But yeah, I will include the uh, full list of the Likewise. Like if you want to see all the movies and TV shows that were recommended to me on Likewise, I will have that linked down below because there's so many recommendations and I'm like, how am I ever going to get through everything on this list? If you're watching this and you have any other like Korean TV show or movie recommendations that you think I would enjoy, please let me know. I would love to know. Please help me out. Anyways, I'm just going to read the first short story in Cursed Bunny and then I'm going to watch Our Beloved Summer on Netflix because I'm trash for that show already. It's so cute. <laughs> stuck in an elevator trope. The fact that this third episode is called 10 Things I Hate About You. This show is speaking to my soul right here. Hello, hi, it's the next morning. And last night, I wanted to let you know, I only did end up reading the first short story in this, but I'm already so freaked out. <laughs> like this first story was just called The Head, right? Hold on, let me just read you the first little, like the first few sentences of this short story. It says, she was about to flush the toilet. Mother, she looked back. There was a head popping out of the toilet calling for her. Mother, the woman looked at it for a moment. Then she flushed the toilet. The head disappeared in a rush of water. She left the bathroom. Like that's how this story starts, okay? And I'm like, what the fuck? Is this even about like what and it was the most unsettling like weird short story that i've read in a long time but i'm very intrigued it was like disgusting but also like absolutely fascinating and also horrifying and so i don't know just based off that first short story alone i am very invested and the more i think about it because like in the moment i was like okay yeah that was really weird like four stars but then i was thinking about it like all night and i was like that is disgusting and so weird but also so unique <laughs> and so i think that first short story just got five stars for me like now that i'm reflecting on it a little bit more and i'm so excited to read the rest of these now because i'm like this is exactly the type of weird shit that i look for in you know, horror novellas or like short stories in horror. Horror is one of those genres that just really thrives in the short story format. And so yeah, I'm really excited to read this today. Then last night, you know, as you saw, I was watching that cute Netflix show, Our Beloved Summer. It's just adorable, okay? It's so cute. I love the two leads in that show and they have really good chemistry. Yeah, anyways, today I am on tank watching duty because Rachel and Obed are going down to Seattle today. They're doing like a whole bunch of different stuff today. So they might be gone for like most of the day. So I think I'm just gonna have a chill like reading day today because it's, it's been so long since I've just dedicated like an entire day to just kind of chilling and reading. I feel like these last couple of days or for the last like two weeks, I've just been like, okay, go, 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 go and get a bunch of stuff done today. But no, today is gonna be a chill day where I barely leave the couch and I just eat and I read and I live my best life. That's the plan. And I also will be hanging out with Tang, huh? Yeah. We're gonna be besties today. It's like, what do you mean today? We're always besties. I'm Tanky, I'm sorry, you're right. We're always besties. You're my best friend, Tank. Tank's like, as long as there is the heated blanket involved, sign me up. I'm a glow trotter. You and I pick your nine, Hajima, Hoodie, no Mudala, we just different, I don't butter. Georgia, I'm a globe trotter. You and I, pick your name, Hajima, Hoodie, no Mudala, we just different, I don't butter. Georgia, I'm a globe trotter. 
globetrotter. 지금부터 시작이야. 한 턱에 money calls. 조직에 리듬이야. 한 턱에 money man the moves. I've been killing it now. 아직 랩이 미쳐버린 범위 나이니까. 하 돌아봐. 하 미래로 돌아가. 한 두원의 cause I'm fly now. 비교는 더 알아. 아직까지 못하잖아. 겪어지만 나의 실력 need no visa. 뉴욕에서 한국까지 everybody raving visa. I'm balling out cause I'm a globetrotter. Yeah. 나처럼 잘 나가는 래퍼 불러. Yeah. 나 소미 나가다가 everybody staring. I don't need to play with rockets. 나의 비주 레전드. Hello, um, it's now about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I actually had some friends doing reading sprints earlier today. My friend Katie and Chandler were both on doing reading sprints, so I decided to join them for a couple of hours so I can get some reading done. And I am now on page 109 of this book. I read a few different short stories during that time. I feel like these short stories are like the perfect length for me, by the way, for short stories, because I love a good horror short story that's like somewhere around 20-ish pages. Like that's my ideal short story length. And so I like that most of these are around that length. So as I said earlier last night, I read the first short story, which was The Head, which is probably gonna be a five star for me. Like I just thought that one was so weird and so unique. And then the second short story in this was called The Embodiment. And I took some notes on these, but this one was very strange because it was about this woman who got pregnant from taking too many birth control pills. It was kind of a mind fuck to be honest and I kind of really enjoyed the commentary in this short story that kind of revolves around like women who are pregnant or women who are having babies on their own. Like I really liked the commentary in that one. And then the third short story was called Cursed Bunny, which is the one that this collection is named after. And to be honest, I think that was one of my least favorite that I've read so far. I just thought it was a little bit too confusing to be honest. Like, I don't know if it was just me or if I just couldn't follow the story very easily. But from what I understood, it was about like this company who had been cursed by these bunnies and like the bunnies were eating all of their different documents and there was a little more to the story than just that but it was just kind of that not that interesting I guess maybe it's because I didn't really care about the company like I don't know I just didn't care about it very much and then the next one that I read was called the frozen finger and this one is probably my least favorite that I've read so far out of all of them because it's just about this woman who like seemingly kind of gets into this accident where she doesn't remember anything and it's this voice that like comes into her head and they're like, yeah, this happened. Don't you remember that? And she's like, no, what? And then the voice is like, yeah, and then this happened and it, and it completely contradicts the last thing that the voice just told her. And she's like, wait, but didn't you just tell me that? And she's like, yeah, but then this, don't you remember that this happened? And it like, it's just, I don't know. It was a little confusing and a little strange and it just wasn't my favorite. And then the most recent story that I just finished was called Snare. And this one is probably also one of my favorite short stories that I've read in this collection, but I will warn you that it's also probably one of the most disturbing and like gruesome short stories in this collection. I feel like um, the first two short stories and this other one, Snare, I feel like they're written in a way that's very grotesque. You know, they're written in a way that's very vivid, very graphic with some of the like body kind of horror stuff that's happening to the bodies. It's just not, a, it's not an easy read, you know, it's intense. And that one in particular, Snare, it involves like a little bit of animal abuse with this fox. That was like not the most pleasant thing to read, but this story was fascinating. It's about this like man who finds this fox who bleeds gold and like you can only imagine, you know, <laughs> what ends up happening with that fox. But then the story, it's not just about the fox though. It ends up being this story about even more things than that. And I don't want to give anything away, which is why I'm being super vague about it, but I freaking loved that. Even though I was so disturbed and like, ugh, the whole time I was reading it, but like, it was very fascinating. And I feel like I haven't thought about it too hard yet, but I feel like there's some commentary within that story that I need to like analyze more. That's one that I might reread a second time, to be honest, just because I really did enjoy it. I love when short stories make you think for a long time after you finish them. I think that's when you know short stories are the most effective. And yeah, like, I don't know, fuck, I'm like enjoying this so far. Like, even though there's been two out of the five short stories so far that were just kind of like whatever for me, three out of the five have been some really interesting shit. And so, I don't know, I'm kind of excited to read more of this. Um, I think right now, at this moment in time, I have to catch up on a few, like, you know, household things like I have to finish folding my laundry. I need to wash my hair because my hair is like disgusting. Just get a couple things done but I'm hoping to read at least maybe one or two more short stories this afternoon hopefully before Rachel and Obed get home.
Hello, it is a little bit later in the night, but I wanted to let you know that I did read two more of the short stories in this. The next short story that I read was the one called Goodbye, My Love, and this one was really interesting. This one was also only about 20 pages, and it was about this woman who was kind of like falling in love with this android that was also kind of like a female android. It was very like Blade Runner 2049 kind of vibes and I really enjoyed it. For like the first half of it, I was like, oh, this is feeling like a romance. Like, I don't really know where the horror is gonna come in and then, you know, the horror, it happened. But it was a really cool short story and it was very unique and just like interesting. Like, I don't know, I really love this author's ideas, like whether or not I absolutely love like the writing and everything's perfect about these short stories, I really love the concepts. And then the second short story that I read was called Scars and this one is the longest one in the collection I believe. This one's about 60 pages but oh my gosh. So this one I was so intrigued like right from the start because the very first line of this short story says the boy was dragged into the cave. And then the first paragraph talks about how he doesn't know why he's being dragged into the cave and he's like really scared for his life. It was coming towards him and it just has it in quotation so you don't really know like what it is. This was such a fascinating short story like for 60 pages I felt like I got so much out of this story and there were some surprising moments. It was twisty. It was creepy. The idea of this thing in this like oh my god it was just freaking me out. You know the writing was just really good and I also kind of love um, stories like this where I feel like there's multiple stories that I've read so far where it's kind of like there's a legend about this thing in a small town or like oh yeah there's like this rumor or this story or this folklore about this creature in the town that definitely had that kind of vibe in this book but it also had a similar vibe to one of the other stories and I can't remember which one. I think I only have three short stories left in this and I'm like Ugh, I don't want it to be over because this is probably one of my favorite short story collections that I've ever read. Last night I didn't end up reading any more of the book before I went to bed because I decided instead to watch this show on Hulu that's this Korean show called Flower of Evil. And this is a show that I've been hearing a lot about because it's about this wife who's a detective and she kind of finds out that her husband has this kind of mysterious past and I think he's like a killer or something. I don't really know, but I only watched the first episode last night. I didn't realize it was on Hulu. So I was pretty excited about that, but uh, yeah, it's interesting so far. But I wanted to show you because I just got my Caraway package in the mail. And if you don't know, Caraway has these different like pans and different products and they are not sponsoring this video. Just wanted to make that clear, but they did send me this to, you know, do a little review of it. And look at this giant package it came in. It's so ginormous. I thought I would show you the pans on camera and then it's actually kind of perfect because we were planning on making some dinner tonight here at the apartment. And I was like, what a perfect way to test these out. So I thought we could do a little unboxing. Look at this, it's huge. God, yes. Okay, see, so they send these lids all kind of like in this thing that you can hang up inside the door, inside like, the door of a cabinet, which is so nice. And it does come with the little sticky thing so that you can hang it up yourself. This. Yeah, so the set comes with four of the different pans, which, oh my gosh, these are so cool. First one is the saute pan. This one is a fry pan. This one is Dutch oven. And then this one is a sauce pan. Oh my God, cute. I just pulled out the rest of everything and it has these little, Caraway, dude, these would be perfect for ASMR purposes. I'm obsessed. And it has this little, um, you know, booklet that kind of shows you like everything that comes in your kit. And it also, you know, it teaches you how to keep them clean. But also it's really cool because it comes with these little pan dividers for no extra cost. So it makes it all cute so you can like set them up on the counter, but so they're like out of the way of everything else. I personally went for the navy blue, as you can see, just because I'm obsessed with navy blue, but they do have these available in a couple of other colors, and it was really hard to choose which one I wanted because the navy was cute. I really liked the green and the coral. These are also 100% non-toxic, and they feel so like 
heavy duty. Like this feels like really heavy, especially compared to the other pans that I have in this kitchen. This thing is so solid and so heavy. I'm just, wow, this is stunning. Yeah, I think it's super important to invest in your kitchen, especially if you cook a lot at home. Investing in your kitchen is never a bad idea and investing in your health because these are non-toxic and they're beautiful. So yeah, thank you so much to Caraway for sending me these products. Again, this isn't sponsored, but I do have an affiliate link down below. So if you wanna go and check it out, the link will be down below and I do get a small little commission if you use my link. But yeah, this is exciting. Thank you so much to Caraway and I'm definitely planning on using these tonight to make dinner. My goodness, okay, that was way easier to put up than I thought it was gonna be. These sticky things stick right to the cupboard and make it so easy to install. And then I thought it, this wasn't gonna be able to close with them on, but it closes perfect. All right, this is how we have set it up for now. They look stunning. So we're gonna use this little one to make rice in. And then we have the big two over here because we're gonna use this chicken chow mein, which is from Trader Joe's by the way, and it's my new favorite thing in this world. Seriously, if you like chow mein noodles, um, highly recommend trying these out. So but we're making two because it's gonna be three of us <laughs> eating. And I know this bag says that it serves three, but like that's some bullshit. <laughs> and then we're also gonna be trying this mandarin orange chicken, which is also from Trader Joe's. Now look how cute! <laughs> All right, food is all done. We got this orange chicken, which is amazing, by the way. Like, the sauce did not stick at all to the bottom. And then we made some white rice and this chicken, which is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I am back in bed and I am planning on finishing up these last couple of short stories now. Hello, what's up? It's the next morning and I wanted to let you know that last night I did finish Cursed Bunny. So the last three short stories that I read last night, I have mm, feelings about them. So one of them was called Home Sweet Home. And this one, it started off kind of interesting, but then I quickly kind of lost interest and I actually found it really hard to follow. It's about this like couple who buys this new home and then like there's some weird things happening. At first I thought it was gonna be this like really creepy like haunted house kind of vibe, but it didn't really end up being that. Like, I don't know. It's probably, to be honest, one of my least favorites in this entire collection. I was skimming towards the end because I was losing interest so fast. And then the second to last story is called Ruler of the Winds and Sand. This is another one that was definitely not my thing because this one feels the most fantasy out of all of the, you know, short stories in this entire collection because this one involves like a prince and a princess and the prince is blind and she's like trying to break the curse of the prince being blind and I just honestly could care less. Like, it's another one of my least favorites in this entire collection. But then the last one, the last short story is called Reunion. And then this one ended up being, you know, one of my favorites in the collection. It was really sad and really heartbreaking, but really beautiful. And it's hard to explain what this one is about without like spoiling it for you, but it's just about this man and this woman who they both see this old man and they realize that they're the only ones who can see him you know what I mean? A really beautiful story that kind of talks about trauma and how trauma can like change our lives and also shape who we are. But it's also like a really beautiful story that touches on loneliness. And it was just really fucking sad. Like there is this one quote that I really liked because they repeated this quote twice throughout the short story, but it said, if I could make one wish, I want to be just a little bit happier. If I'm too happy, I will miss the sadness. Just like, I don't know, this one has this like poetic feel to it. And it's just stunning. Like, I just really loved it. Like, I will say, I don't know if this really feels like it belongs in this collection because to me, there's nothing really, you know, truly horrific or like this, there, this story doesn't feel 
like it has very many horror vibes if that makes sense but it's just a really beautiful short story that like it just made me think it nearly brought me to tears it was just beautiful so yeah i don't know i feel like this collection as a whole i made little hearts next to all of the ones that i really enjoyed so like six out of the ten were absolute winners for me and like i will say once again if you are planning to read this one my personal favorite short stories were mm -hmm. the head the embodiment snare goodbye my love scars and the reunion which is the very last one but yeah overall wow very impressed with this short story collection it probably is my favorite short story collection that i've ever read yeah i also did want to mention last night right before i fell asleep i did start the young adult audiobook which is made in korea and i only got 10 percent of the way into this one last night but this is another cute you know like young adult kind of story it's about these two young korean americans and they're living in america and they both run these different like korean businesses but it's about how they're like rivals or something so it's kind of like enemies to lovers and it's like really cute and really soft so far. Hello, hi, it's later at night and I've had a super busy and like really productive day. I didn't end up vlogging too much today because I was just listening to Made in Korea on audio literally all day. I went to the gym, I went grocery shopping, I just did all kinds of things and I finished. I literally finished this entire audiobook today. I didn't want to vlog too much because I know that this is not- this might not be the content that you're here for if you're here to see me just talk about thrillers and horror books, so I'll keep this brief. But this one is like a young adult contemporary that was like super cute because it's like these two teenagers who are both selling different Korean products on their campus. So it sort of has this like enemies to lovers vibes because they're competing for each other's sales. And I thought that these characters were so freaking cute. I loved the guy. His name is Wes, which is like one of my favorite names, by the way. I know that's so random, but I love the name Wes. And his character was so cute because he plays the saxophone, which like freaking relatable. If you didn't know, I played the saxophone when I was in middle school, so like I just found him to be super relatable. And yeah, it is a little bit, you know, tropey at times, you know, because yeah, he has this dream where he wants to go and do music in college and his family is very much like not about that, you know, they want him to have like a job that's gonna earn a lot of money and it has a lot of those, you know, common tropes that you see in some young adult books like like it was never my dream, it's always your dream and I should live my own dream. But nonetheless, it was cute. Sometimes these characters were a little bit, you know, frustrating and like made some decisions that I wasn't like 100% down with but at the same time, like it's a young adult book, you know, like that can be expected. They're young adults who are learning and maturing and it was cute. Cute. Like, I don't know, it was a perfectly cute time. You know, sometimes I like to take a break from all the thriller and horror and just read something cute like this, you know, and it delivered on that cuteness. And so I'd probably give this one like a 3.5 stars. It wasn't anything like super, super memorable, but it was like a nice way to pass the day. You know, it was a nice listen on audio and I enjoyed myself. So that's all that really matters. But anyways, tonight I am planning on starting the final book for this video, Seven Years of Darkness. I do have this one on audio checked out for my library as well. So I'm going to lay in bed, get all cozy, I might change, and then start this one, which I'm just, I'm so excited to read this one. There's like a fun little map at the start of this, so that's exciting. Hold up just one second, okay? Just one second. I just put on my, um, you know, Squid Game shirt as one does. And then in the prologue of this book, it mentions the game Red Light Green Light right on the prologue, okay? Our main character is being talked to by this detective and they're like, you played hide and seek tonight with a girl who died two weeks ago? And he's like, not hide and seek, red light green light. <laughs> Which, you know, if you've seen Squid Game, then you know red light green light. Very traumatizing stuff, you know? I'll never think of that game in the same way. So like, what the heck? That is so strange. How weird that it would mention that. And I'm literally wearing the shirt that is like the red light green light moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that I hate being alone, yeah. I take care of my eat on my tank account and yeah. Now all that shit to one out and there. You look so fly again. I think who's high in our muscle. We better be better friends, or not? We better be better friends. Oh, we the mundane and dead. Oh, come in mind, I don't want to take care of my chances, babe. I've been wondering, she got in it. So. 
I wanted to give a quick update because I am now just a little bit over 100 pages into this book. I don't know how I feel about this so far. Like, to be honest, I'm kind of getting bored by this story only 100 pages in. I feel like the writing is just dragging for me because, okay, I feel like this book started off really interesting with this prologue, you know, we're following this young son who his dad was, like, accused of murder, and we follow this son as he's kind of getting rejected from, like, all these different schools because of the things that his dad did, like, nobody wants him around, and then shortly after that, it's about how he, like, finds this manuscript, and he reads about this thing that happened seven years ago, and then so we're jumping back in time now seven years ago to something that happened, and it's more just about this, like, cat and mouse game of these guys, because there's this girl that died in this reservoir, and there's these men who kind of, like, knew what happened, but it's kind of weird because I feel like the reveal that usually would be, like, towards the end of a thriller, like, we already know kind of what happened, and so it's, like, we're just kind of getting explained why. So I don't know, I'm not loving this one so far, but I think I'm just gonna, you know, push through, listen to a little bit more of this on audio tonight, and then maybe try to finish it up tomorrow. But so far, it's just okay for me. Like, I'm not loving the writing or the characters in this one nearly as much as The Good Son. Hello, it is the next afternoon. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon now, but I wanted to let you know that last night I continued to read a little bit more of this book. I got up to page 190, which puts me about 60% of the way through this book, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm still a little bored. I've actually considered DNFing because I just don't super care a whole lot about what's happening, but I've decided to just push through, you know, like maybe the ending will surprise me. I don't know. It's like I'm not hating it, but I'm not loving it either. It's just very average for me. So the audio that was on all of these video clips was absolute shit, so I completely scrapped the audio. Basically in these clips we are making a Korean barbecue beef dish that we found this recipe on Tasty, so I can link the recipe down below. But it's really interesting because the secret ingredient is pear, that you make pear and it has like green onions in the sauce and just a bunch of really interesting things that I would never expect you know, this dish to have. So um, yeah, we ended up making this for dinner. We made it with some white rice. And then Rachel also made these chow mein noodles that she really likes to make. It's like a TikTok recipe or something, but this dinner was so freaking good. Like it slapped so freaking hard. The flavor on this beef was unreal. It was so good. And Tank definitely approved of it as well. <laughs> but yeah, we'll definitely be making this one again in the future because it was so tasty. Finished seven years of darkness. And yeah, I still mostly feel the same about it. I did think there was a few things that happened towards the end that were kind of redeemable for some of the story, but I don't know. I feel like this is one of those thrillers where, you know, the main mystery aspect of the thing gets revealed to you pretty early on, but then it's like one of those things where it's a little bit more layered than you might think, you know, because a lot of these characters have secrets or like different things that they're hiding from each other. It's very much like a cat and mouse game. But I just, I don't know, I wasn't a huge fan of these characters. I just found it to be kind of boring and slow if I'm being honest. Like I just didn't connect with these characters in the same way that I connected to the characters in The Good Son. So I feel like if you're wanting to check out this author, these are both by the same author. I would definitely recommend The Good Son over this one because The Good Son, I was a really big fan of this protagonist in this book. I just thought he was so fascinating. Whereas in this one, like, I don't know, it was just kind of boring to be honest. Like I only really liked the first third of this book and then the ending had some interesting things but the middle of this just drags so much for me. Like it was just really slow. So I feel like I'm gonna give this one either like two to two and a half stars and I'm sad that this is probably my least favorite that I read for this video other than the one that I uh you know DNF'd of course. <laughs>
I am so freaking stoked about Cursed Bunny. Like I definitely discovered a new favorite short story horror collection. Like this is a book that's gonna stay on my mind for a very long time. And I feel like so sad because I feel like this author hasn't done too much, but that also makes me excited for the future of like what this author could do in the future. This was definitely my favorite thing that I read for this video. I just thought this was so unique, so creepy. The short stories were so good and like six out of the ten short stories in this were absolute bangers for me which like rarely ever happens with short story collections I definitely would like to continue this kind of series in the future with reading you know books that were published in other countries originally and then they were translated into English like I think the next video that I want to do for this is Japanese books because there are so many books that come from Japan that I've been recommended over the years that I just haven't gotten to and so I feel like that would be a good next video in this series for me so maybe I'll be doing that soon and yeah I definitely plan also to continue in those Korean TV shows that I was talking about um Our Beloved Summer I'm still on episode four I think of this one and then I just started Flower of Evil and this is definitely Definitely one that I plan to continue as well so that will be happening after this video <laughs> and also like if there are any different Korean TV shows or movies or even other books that you think that I should check out that you think I would like please let me know I'm always looking for more recommendations I hope you enjoyed and thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon with another video bye